Can Mercedes end their brilliant 2018 on a high? Can Ferrari end 2018 on a positive after a disappointing season? And can Red Bull get the race win they should have got in Brazil? The only way to find out is in this video. So here we are for the final race of 2018 in Yas Marina in Abu Dhabi. This season has just flown by, it started at the end of March. And just like that it's the end of November and here we are for the last Grand Prix. And hopefully for once this race can actually be good. Because I think 2018 honestly deserves it. But here are some track stats about Yas Marina. The track is 5.5km long and the race will be ran over 55 laps. The first Grand Prix was only just back in 2009 with the lap record also from that year from Sebastian Vettel of 140.2. It's amazing that that record has still stood to this day, considering that there have been faster cars since 2009. We'll see if anyone can break that. Now last year at Abu Dhabi it was a Mercedes 1-2 in qualifying and the race. But it was Valtteri Bottas taking pole and the win. With his teammate Lewis Hamilton close behind in second. And then behind were the two Ferraris of Vettel and Raikkonen. In what was one of the most boring races I think I've ever seen. Let's just pray to God it doesn't happen again. I don't think I can deal with another snooze fest like that. But anyway let's preview how the top teams are going to do this weekend. Starting off at Mercedes. Now despite Mercedes of course clenching both the drivers and constructors titles, in the last couple races they haven't had the pace at all. For example in Mexico they never really had the fastest car of course because of the altitude, which does give a team like Red Bull an advantage, but then in Brazil despite them getting pole position they were very slow on race day, and I still think Lewis Hamilton was a bit lucky to win. Now when it comes to whether that will happen this weekend it really depends on one thing, whether Mercedes run this upgraded wheel rim of theirs. If you didn't see my video on the wheel rim issue it's in the description down below. But basically this wheel rim was helping with their rear tyre wear. And importantly the rear tyre temperatures. And after taking it off at the US Grand Prix they've now struggled in that department. So if this weekend they do have it on the car then that should help a lot on race day. But on the other hand if they don't run it then I don't see how with their race pace they're going to win the Grand Prix. Abu Dhabi is not known for say bad tyre wear, but it is more prevalent at a track like this compared to Inter Lagos, so there is a good chance they're going to struggle. All I'll say on Mercedes is, don't bet on a race win for Sunday. Now Ferrari come into the last race of 2018 after what has been a disappointing season. They've had the pace to go and win races and get pole positions but they just have underachieved. Ever since the summer break they've only won two races. That's poor for a team that is supposed to be going for both the drivers and constructors championships. But with now nothing to fight for will Ferrari show up? Just like in Brazil they should have the pace to do so. But we all know what the word should means with Ferrari. Should with Ferrari means won't. That's why they've had such a disappointing second half of the season. But again they should have the pace to win this Grand Prix. Especially with that middle sector which is basically about power. But if Ferrari fail to deliver again? At this point can we really be surprised? It's been a usual occurrence for the Scuderia. Now the pace of the Red Bull at the last Grand Prix was so impressive. They had by far the fastest car on race day. Max Verstappen should have won that race but of course we know why he didn't. And Daniel Ricciardo just missed out on a podium despite starting in P11. Can they show similar pace here? Now in my opinion they will. Because I just think that this track suits their car more than Brazil does. You've got to remember in Brazil despite the first and third sectors being all about power... They still had on race day the fastest car. Now this track does have one sector which is basically about power. But the aerodynamics of the car is more important here than it is at a track like Brazil. And with the tyres being softer for this weekend I think that will help the team. The only problem is that it is quite hard to pass here. 
So even if they are fantastic on their tyres on race day and do have the best car, they might not be able to go anywhere with it. It is a lot easier to pass at a track like in Brazil than it is here. But honestly, with the pace they have right now, I'm expecting them to get at least one car onto the podium. Their car right now is just super fast and will definitely be strong on Sunday. But now let's look at the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton, of course, is your world champion in first place with Vettel second and Kimi Raikkonen in P3. Then it's Valtteri Bottas only just in fourth with Verstappen fifth and Daniel Ricciardo in sixth. And I do think, guys, Verstappen will take fourth in the Drivers' Championship this weekend. He should have the pace within himself and should have a fast enough car. And maybe if he gets lucky, who knows, he could finish up in third ahead of Raikkonen. Of course, they will see what goes down. Now, though, let's move on to the midfield and see how they are going to do. When it comes to this race for McLaren, it is only about one man. Fernando Alonso in what is most likely going to be his final race in F1. A very memorable F1 career is most likely coming to a close in Abu Dhabi. Can he though have a final great outing? I don't think he can honestly because the car is just not quick enough. If the car was say quarter of a second faster, maybe he could get a final point. But their car right now is probably the worst on the grid, so how is Fernando going to do so? He basically needs a miracle like it raining somehow. It has unfortunately got to that point with McLaren. But despite just how slow the McLaren car is, hopefully Fernando does have a good final weekend. And considering what has happened in his career, I think he does deserve it. At this race, Renault can officially confirm their fourth place in the Constructors. Even though we've known since the US Grand Prix they're going to finish there. But when they do finally confirm that, I think they deserve it. Now yes, Renault have not had as fast a car as Haas have. But in a very similar way to Mercedes, when it comes to getting the results on race day, they have been very good at that. But where will they be pace-wise this weekend? Pace-wise, they're probably going to be at best, say P9 or P10. This track definitely suits their car better than Interlagos does. But I don't think they're going to have as fast a car as, say, Haas or Sauber. Because I just think those cars are just too quick. Again, though, with a bit of luck or some good race pace, I think the best they can get is a P9 or a P10. They're most likely going to be competing with, say, Force India and Toro Rosso. But as long as Renault confirm fourth in the Constructors, I don't think they care. Because at the end of the day for 2018, they have achieved their goal. For Force India, this has been a rather turbulent season, after of course changing ownership during the summer break. But pace-wise during 2018, they've been very up and down. One race like in Baku or even Spa, they're very, very quick. But then at a race like Brazil, they're quite slow. This season, you don't really know what you're going to get with Force India. It's either great or it's mediocre. What are we going to get this weekend? Most likely, it's going to be mediocre as the pace of the Force India has dropped off ever since the Japanese Grand Prix. And honestly, I think that's because they've now focused development on the 2019 car. And that does make a lot of sense, as they want in 2019 to get back to the front of the midfield. But this weekend, they do have an interesting fight on their hands. They have to try and hold off Sauber for P7 in the Constructors, as they are only six points ahead. And for me, it doesn't look too great for Force Indy when it comes to holding off Sauber. Because Sauber have just been so quick in the last few races. Definitely the momentum is with Sauber. And that is what might put Force Indy under a bit of pressure this weekend. As finishing P7 in the Constructors is still important for this team. We'll see if they can hold on. 2018 for Williams has been their worst ever. And this is the final weekend where we get to see this absolute crap car. And I think though Williams think the exact same thing. They cannot wait for 2018 to be over. As they're already focusing on 2019 with putting Robert Kubica possibly back in that car. Remember guys, this is being recorded before any possible Kubica news. This weekend though, they should be ahead of McLaren, but don't expect anything. 
Because at the end of the day, this is Williams we are talking about. Hopefully though, they do have a somewhat positive end. After an inconsistent first half of 2018, Toro Ross in the last half have been more consistent. Not only with their finishes in the races, but also with their pace. As the car and the power unit just keep improving like Sauber are, but just not as rapidly. But now with Sauber basically too far in 8th place, Toro Rosso essentially have nothing to fight for this weekend. Pace wise I don't think they'll be in the top 10, I think they're going to be around 13th or 14th place. Abu Dhabi has never been the greatest track for this team. For example last season they were absolutely terrible. So I think Toro Rosso will end 2018 on a quiet one. The last Grand Prix for Haas I guess was good in terms of scoring points. But the last few races however just have not been good. As they've missed out on a crucial chance to beat Renault to 4th in the Constructors. Still though it has been a good 2018 considering how far back they were in 2017. Especially at the end of that season. And this has been by far their best season in F1 to date. And they should have the pace to end it on a high. This kind of track should see their cars up there in the top 10. Maybe not at the front of the midfield, but definitely in that top 10 in qualifying and the race. But there is one problem for Haas. We do have very soft tyres compared to what we had in Brazil. And as we know from Mexico and Monaco, when it comes to the softest compounds, Haas do struggle a lot. So if they do have issues this weekend, it's most likely going to be with the tyres. Because this has been a problem during 2018. But again, after what has been still a successful 2018, it would be nice to see this team end on a high. They certainly deserve a final good race. And finally is Sauber the biggest improvers in 2018. This time last year they were at the back of the grid. And one year later right now it looks as though they have the fastest car in the midfield. Just look at Brazil where they qualified in P7 and P8. And Charles Leclerc finished in P7 in the race as well. And I just think that this momentum is going to keep on going. Because they continue to develop this car and continue to improve. And it seems as though the other midfield teams aren't exactly doing that. And I also think Sauber have a very, very good chance of finishing P7 in the Constructors. All they need is for Force India to not score any points. And for say one of their cars to finish in P7 and one of their other cars to also finish in the points. And that is massively achievable. And you know what, I'm kind of hoping for it because I think Sauber do deserve it. The last couple of years for Sauber have been very difficult when it comes to finances and also results. And it would be nice to see this team celebrating this kind of result. So hopefully Sauber go out there with great pace and get it. Here though guys is the Constructors standings. Mercedes are the Constructors champions in first place with Ferrari second and Red Bull in third. Renault are about to confirm their fourth place in the Constructors with Haas in fifth, McLaren sixth and Force India in P7. And then Sauber are just behind in P8 with Toro Rosso P9 and Williams in P10. This weekend you definitely have to watch out for Force India and Sauber. Now here guys is my content schedule for this race weekend. All of this is live of course excluding the post race podcast. I'll be live on Friday night at 6pm to review practice in Abu Dhabi. And then live at 12pm on Saturday for the qualifying watch along. Then later on Saturday, I'll be live at 5pm for the qualifying review. And then the race watch along is at 10 past 12pm UK time on Sunday. With the final race review of 2018 live on Monday night at 6pm. And then as I said, your post race podcast. So hopefully for the final time in 2018, you guys can come along and join me for that. As ever, it would be great to have you along. So this is the last race weekend of 2018. A 2018 that I have definitely enjoyed. Not all of the races of course have been great. But there have been plenty of races such as Silverstone, Bahrain, Cota, Monza that have been so good. And of course the last race in Brazil. And hopefully for the first time since 2012 we can get a great Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. 
Don't forget guys to join my Discord, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what do you think is going to happen this weekend at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.